Justin Bieber? Where's the Katy Perry? Where's the Fallout Boy? Noddle, you have witch powers. Turn him into a chipmunk and feed him to the owl outside. I will do no such thing. We're here to talk about our website. HomeCanineNeutering.com What? No! InvaderPet.com Where people can check out our comic strips or locate bookstores selling bookmarks with our comics on them. So, listeners, want to see comics of me, Noddle the Witch, my pets Kaylee Cat and Spike Beagle? Go to InvaderPet.com and check us out! Seriously, though, you guys really have a canine neutering website? Magical Things offers fantasy art for festival and everyday living, featuring the fine arts and craft creations of Marjorie Delaney on practical printed products such as journals, mugs, costuming, wearable art, formal wear, and accessories. We also carry a line of magical supplies, including candles, oils, herbs, and limited ritual items. All items are created in a scenic studio space in Culpeper, Virginia, and available throughout the world online, as well as at festivals and events. Magical Things offers custom creations too, such as costuming, illustrations, and more. Come visit us at MagicalFantasy.com. Coming up on August 3rd, starting at 8 p.m. on Let's Talk About the Music, It Spells and Curses. Woohoo! From New York City. We'll be talking about education and also the greatest that is Prince. So stay tuned. Let's go to Let's Talk About the Music.com and get more show details. And don't forget, August 3rd, Spells and Curses, right here on Let's Talk About the Music. Coming live Tuesday, August 2nd from 5 to 7 p.m., the new show Spotlight will arrive with a tribute to Prince. Join Shells and Spider for two hours of Prince, his music, his career, and influences on the world of music. And we would love to have any Prince tribute bands or artists join us on Spotlight. Call us at 360-464-4216 before August 1st.
talk about the music. I'm Shells, um, and uh, we're talking to uh, Sean from Syrian Session, Sean from Maximus, <laughs> and Spider, who is going to call himself Sean for right now, so he's Sean in the hall. Yeah. Sean, Sean, Sean. How's it going, Sean? <laughs> and I'm just Shells. That's it. No you can be Chanel if you want to. <laughs> yeah, Chanel. you can be. That would work. <laughs> so we could be all four Shans. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, Shans and Chanels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so beginning the air. Beginning, we have we had Spider and Sean from Serious Session talk about how they got into into the music. Now Sean from Maximus, your turn. Okay, so, I think I was about, when I was like 11 or 12 years old, like I was like doing the hip-hop thing. I was real big into like Nelly, Chingy, Eminem, you know, like the popular thing that the kids in, in my middle school were listening to. I met this kid who, sadly not friends anymore, this guy was like a brother to me for a long, long time. He, he cut corners and did a couple things I didn't like, you know, crossing me personally and he actually is what really got me into rock music. Um, I also would play like Metallica and it went out in the car, but it wasn't like, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't like the loud aggressiveness that I had with, with the, the gangster hip hop I was listening to back in the day. And so this kid throws me Slipknot's Iowa CD. He's like, they figure this out and check it out. You might like, it. from then on, like I stopped listening to hip hop and I wanted nothing but metal from then on. Hmm. So I got, I got watching, you know, live videos of Slipknot playing and watching bands like Lamb of God, In Flames, uh, Disturbed, Breaking Benjamin. Um, I'm trying to think what bands he's supposed to do back in the day, but I got a real big interest watching watching the guitarist from In Flames and the guitarist from Slipknot playing. And I would show my mom these videos, and my mom being, you know, the, the woman she is, like, she's, she's not conservative, but she's also, like, she's put off by some things. <laughs> and I showed her a flip down video and she's like why do you like this <laughs> I'm like mom this is awesome this is like the coolest thing ever so a couple years later she ended up buying me a, a first deck guitar from, from Walmart that's cool and yeah so I, I started getting my, my learning from there well I didn't really learn music theory I took maybe a month of lessons and I said you know just screw it I'm a learner on my own so I pretty much learned everything by ear, by playing tabs, and I've gone from playing in, like, the first band I actually played in was a deathcore band out of St. Louis. And it was, like, along the lines of, like, the heavier bands, like White Chapel, Suicide Silent, stuff like that. And it seems like since that first band, I've kind of, like, gone down in heaviness. But, dude, I did about three months sit with them, and then they found someone else to play bass, someone else to play bass in this band. Um, I just kind of, kind of fell apart from there. Hmm. I'm going to try to think back now when I was younger. I've done a lot of partying since then, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I met this kid in high school. He's actually the, the drummer for Archangelo, Jeff. Hmm. And I graduated high school, you know, a couple years went by, and he finally graduated. And he's like, hey man, I put this band together called Jeff and the Nutsack Police. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're doing what? Points for <laughs> creativity. Yeah, right. This kid, like, literally, he, he's one of my best friends. He, he's the funniest guy I've ever met in my entire life. When I'm in, like, the worst mood ever, and I got no one around, I call Jeff, and he's, like, over at my house in 10 minutes. <laughs> and he, he's, like, the kind of person, like, he can line up a room, and you can literally be at a funeral, and Jeff can make the entire room laugh. Let's put it that way. Well, that's cool. So... He did some songs with some other people, and we got a few songs together, and um, we put up this song called Solar System, and we actually took a riff that sounded like Nickelback, because we both can't stand that band, and took a Nickel Nickelback-style riff, threw hardcore elements into it, and deathcore elements into it, and it's literally just me just chugging away on the car, playing rock riffs and deathcore breakdown. With Jeff just screaming nonsense over everything. <laughs> and then, um, I'm trying to think after that, I did 
I did that set with Archangela that I mentioned in the previous show. Well, then I ended up here in Maximus and pray for where I'm at now. But I mean, going back to the beginning, my mom, like she, my mom raised me on country. And well, my first show was actually an Alan Jackson concert. Well, that's interesting. You were raising <laughs> yeah. country and you're playing rock. But I had that whole like metal like yeah. thing for the longest time, yeah. So and, uh, did that did did when wait, when you went to that concert did like did any of that translate to you or did you see elements of that and think okay like this is kind of the same thing that I'm doing? Well, I mean, this was back when I was like six years old. Yeah, I had an interest. I thought it was cool oh, because okay. I'm six years old and there's lights everywhere and there's loud music. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. There's lights everywhere. You know, I was entertained more by that. But I mean, when I first really got like my push to play music was literally watching those Slipknot videos. And I'm like, these guys are jumping around on stage. They're throwing down. They're having fun. I'm like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> you see all these people out there in the crowd and they're having a the time of their lives. And I'm like, I want to give that to people. I want to be able like, to look out and see people excited to hear the music that I'm 